So uh, I just got my hay in right now. I just got done unloading it. And here it is. Uh, I got 36 of these bales. And uh, as I was moving them around, a few of them fell apart. And so uh, I got to take a look inside of the bales and see what the grass looked like. And so, uh, you know, here's the uh, the hay. And it's a, it's a pretty good quality hay. I would say it's okay. Uh, I would say it's pretty good. You know, if you take a look inside the hay, you can see that they got a lot of seed heads on them. You got, you got a lot of seed heads. Got a lot of seed heads on the hay. And the, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that I do, uh, if you've ever watched me uh, grow my hay here, one of the things that I'll do is I'll go and I'll check the uh, the width of the blade. I'll go check the uh, the width of the grass to see how uh, you know how much biomass each uh, each leaf essentially is accumulating. And I'll go take a look at it. And uh, this hay right here, you can tell that it's it's pretty dense. The the grass grew in pretty good, and it was uh, harvested uh, while it was seeding. So you got hay uh, there. There's uh, you know a lot of seed heads in there. And so uh, this hay right here, when I eyeball it, I would say uh, when I eyeball it, I would say that this kind of hay is probably about a 12 to 14 percent protein. Uh, the guy that I, that was selling it to me was saying uh, 17 percent is what he thinks, but I don't think it's 17 percent. If it was 17 percent, it would not have the this many seed heads on it. Uh, the grass did come in real good, but there are seed heads on it. And I've already said like 50,000 times that uh, as the uh, the grass develops, the feed qualities of the grass will drop. And it happens on a pretty uh, exponential curve. And so uh, this, the, these hay bales, as I was moving them around, they, uh, they fell apart. And I got, actually got to get over to the bank. I got to get over to the bank to get that uh, paperwork signed and then sent back over to my, uh, that, that lawyer paperwork uh, signed and sent back over to my agent so that I can get that new piece of property squared away. But uh, the one thing that I was going to talk about real fast today was the idea of equity and what do I mean by equity. And, you know, I've already, uh, I've already told, uh, you know, I've already uh, talked about my investment strategy. Why do I invest money the way that I do? Why do I, you know, have this thing where, you know, I, I buy animals first and then I buy cattle uh, feed next and then I buy a uh, real estate and then I, you know, uh, and then I buy machinery. And then and then if I have anything else over at the end of the uh, at the end of the year or if something's going on with my taxes that requires me to buy more stuff, then I buy more stuff then. Right. And this is a very good uh, time for me to talk about equity, because when I talk about equity and uh, why do I uh, purchase cattle feed? You know, I've already said, I'm trying to pick up this hay while I'm uh, filming this real fast. So. But, you know, this cattle feed right here. Okay, so this is a very good way to put it. So for these 36 bales, I paid uh, I paid $4,500. And so for these 36 bales, I paid $4,500. And uh, if I just do my part, I make sure I take care of good animals and I bring in good animals and, uh, you know, I keep my business running. You know, this 4,500, you know, uh, granted that I do my part, right? Uh, you know, uh, if I if I don't run any cattle, if uh, if I don't uh, run the, the proper type of cattle, you know, if, uh, if if my cattle don't look good, you know, uh, you know, I, then I won't get paid. I'll lose money, right? I've already said that, you know, uh, when, okay, so when I do things, it might look very easy and it might look like it makes sense. But, you know, I can almost guarantee that, uh, you know, if, if anybody ever actually tried to go and do what I did, I mean, they would crap their pants. I mean, it's just too, it's too difficult for most people. You know, um, the cattle business is probably one of the hardest businesses. I mean, a lot of people do not want to do agriculture. You know, a lot of people do not want to get into farming. I mean, farming is just a, it's just a very, very, very difficult business. And when you watch me do it, I mean, you might, uh, you know, but here's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, uh, my mother helps me at times. My mother helps me about once a week. She'll come in here and she'll help me. And uh, once or twice a week, she'll come in and help me uh, just uh, do things. I can move the cattle around. And, uh, you know, uh, the interesting thing is, is that my mother is probably a better cattle man than uh, my mother can probably run a cattle business better than 99% of the entire population of the earth. You know, because she just follows me around and helps me. You know, uh, she, you know, my mother can actually uh, take a look at an animal and say, yeah, this animal's going to make money. You know, she actually knows what they look like. You know, uh, sometimes she'll be following me around and she'll take a look at an animal. And she'll say, this one's going to make money. And, I, and I'll be like, yeah, that, that one is going to make money. You know, uh, she actually knows what they look like. You know, uh, my mother is actually probably a better cattleman than 99% of all cattlemen on the entire planet. 
you know, she knows, uh, you know, but she just, you know, uh, but, you know, she's been following me around, helping me about once or twice a week for, uh, for about two and a half years now. And I do very well for myself. You know, I make, I make a boatload of money. And, uh, but I'm not here to talk about that right now. I'm here to talk about equity. And so when I look at hay, right, hay is also an equitable asset. If you, uh, chances are, if I, if I turned around and tried to sell this, I could essentially get my money back, right? Somebody's going to want to buy it. You know, uh, you know, I may have to reduce the price or whatever, but someone's going to want to buy it. Maybe I can get 75% of my money back tomorrow, you know, but chances are I can get a majority of my money back. And that's what I mean by an equitable asset. Hay is, is deemed to be valuable by other people. It's not just me. And when I get done feeding this hay, you know, when I get done feeding these 36 bales, I may have put $4,500 into it, but granted that I do my part, I will actually make probably about seven grand, about $6,000 to $7,000. So I'll actually make a close to a 50% return on my money. And so, you know, uh, I've, I've, I've already talked about equity and I've already told you uh, why I believe equity is the way that it is and why do I define equity the way that it is is that when you purchase something equitable, you're not actually spending money, right? I've already said that 20,000 times, and that is why I define equity the way that I do. You know, when you buy something that is equitable, you're not actually spending money. You are taking your money and purchasing something that is valuable with that money. You are trading that money for something that is valuable. And in a realistic situation, you should be able to change your asset back to cash, right? Like, uh, you know... Uh, if I wanted to sell this hay tomorrow, I, you know, if I dropped the price on it 25%, somebody would probably buy it tomorrow, right? I mean, I would lose $1,000, but I don't really care, right? If I genuinely had to, like, force liquidate my assets, I could probably turn around and drop the price on the hay by 25% and sell it tomorrow, lose $1,000, and just call it a day, right? And if I waited long enough, if the market changed or whatever, you know, granted that if the market went up, then, you know... Uh, because the markets can also go down. I've already talked about the markets. It does not matter what ma what market you are in. Markets go up, down, and to the side, right? There are three directions that the markets can go. Any market, the prices can go up, prices can go down, and prices can go to the side, right? I've already talked about that 20,000 times too. You know, um, but if prices went up, you know, and then uh, I could sell the hay for what I got it for, right? Uh, but if I, if, if I do my part, I bring in good animals, I take care of the animals, I put them on a good diet, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I do. I do what I need to do. I can make almost a 50% return on this hay, and you know, uh, you know, making a 50% return on capital every three months is a drastic amount of money when you scale it. You know, uh, uh, you know, 50% uh, return every three months on just the hay. Uh, so, you know, but you know, if I wanted to make uh, money on just feeding animals. I would have to bring in a lot more animals, right? Like if I wanted to feed three times as much hay, I would need to bring in three times as many animals. And so, you know, uh, that's also been, that's also what I mean by, you know, I, I don't personally uh, believe in the feedlot business. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't do it. Would I do it as a portion of my, of my cattle strategy? Maybe, but realistically, I, I would, I would be willing to bet 50 to one that, you know, at least for the, uh, for the rest of my lifetime, that if I just grow the grass and I put the cattle on it, I don't use any machinery, I don't bail anything or anything like that. I just put the cattle on it and let the cattle eat it. That that will be the most profitable way to run cattle. At least for the entirety of my life, I would be willing to bet 50 to 1. You know, it is probably, I would be willing to bet that that is going to be the cheapest, most cost-effective way to raise high-quality cattle. You just grow the grass and put the animals on it. You don't want to be in... You know, because this stuff right here, like the cattle feed, I've already talked about how cattle feed is almost like a counterbalance to the uh, the cattle market, right? If the price of cattle feed goes up, the price of cattle genuine uh, uh, generally goes down. Uh, so if you know if you are in a situation, where, and I've always and I've already talked about, uh, you know, how do I gauge the cattle feed market? You know, I use corn as the baseline for cattle feed, right? So if the price of corn is going up, the cattle feed is going up, and if the price of corn goes down, the cattle feed is going down, right? I've already said that that's how I do it. Corn. Use corn. Go on this. Go on the commodities market. Go on the internet right now. Look up a corn commodity price, and it will give you the price of corn right now. You know, uh, it will give you the price of corn. And if the, if the price of corn is going down over an extended period of time, the price of feed is also probably going down. If the, pri if the price of corn is going up, the price of feed is probably also going up, 
right? And if the corn market goes down and then bottoms and then goes sideways for an extended period of time, usually what happens is that the, the lighter weight calves and the, and the higher weight calves tend to go, uh, the, the gap between the two tend to close, right? Well, it does not matter if it's a, if it's a bottom or if it's a top. If the, if the corn market goes sideways for an extended period of time, even if it goes ex uh, sideways for an extended period of time at, at an elevated price, you know, the, the gap between the, the lighter weight calves and the higher weight calves uh, generally tends to shrink. And so, you know, uh, you know, I figured right now is a very good time to talk about equity. And what do I mean by equity? And why do you want to invest in things in, that are equitable? And why do I believe that in, uh, the best equitable investment is an investment that you can increase the, you know, if you bought this uh, asset right now, you can knowledgeably increase the value of the asset, right? I've already talked about that yesterday. You know, the spiritual side of investing is like the best investment that you can make is in yourself, right? In terms of spirituality, like if you were going to talk about, you know, I want to, you know, understand uh, investing at a spiritual level. The best investment that you can make is in yourself, right? You want to learn new things. You want to go and be a better person, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, you, you know, uh, that kind of stuff, right? You want to learn new things. You want to become a better person. You want to have good character, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to actually investing in an asset, like if you are looking at an asset and you're about to pay money for it, you're essentially about to trade money for it. What are the best assets to buy in my belief? Tax deductible, the cost of the hay right here, I can deduct it off, off my income, right? It's tax deductible, right? I can deduct the cost of the hay off of my income. And I can also appreciate the value of the hay by feeding it to animals knowledgeably. I raise one to one and a half type medium large frame animals. If I bring them in at about 200 pounds and I raise them until but they're about 600 pounds, then the average weight on them is going to be about 400 pounds according uh, for the time frame that they are here. And if I run the numbers at 400 pounds and I anticipate that they're going to eat 3.25% of their body weight a day in dry matter and this hay is 14% moisture, then they're going to eat about, you know, about 4% of their body weight, right? Then, you know, and at, uh, at, uh, at 400 pounds for the average, that's about 16 pounds of feed a day. And I pay about 12 to 14 cents a pound of, uh, for a pound of feed right now. And so if I feed them uh, 14 pounds of feed and I pay uh, 14 cents a pound, you know, that's, uh, that's about, uh, you know, and, and if I feed them that, that diet to 65% TDN, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, 65% 60, TDN, 12 to 14% diet, protein diet. If I feed them that, that, you know, that diet and I get the feed at this price, you know, and I raise one to one and a half type medium large frame animals. And then, you know, this, this $4,500 investment will turn into about, uh, you know, seven grand. will turn into about six grand. Granted that I do my part with it as well, right? And so, uh, and when I take a look at the hay, when I just take a look at it, you know, because uh, I pulled the I pulled the insides of the bales out uh, when I was uh, lifting them up with my tractor, I can kind of tell, just taking a look at it, you know, a lot of seed heads, a lot of seed heads, you know, got good density on the grass. You know, the grass is not a, a very, very, very vibrant green. Um, it looks like it was a, a tad bit under fertilized or, or uh, no, probably not over watered, but it was a bit uh, under fertilized. And uh, I would say, but the uh, in terms of the uh, the length of the grass and in terms of the density of the grass and, you know, just the, the seed heads and what the grass looks like, I would say that this is, you know, I would say it's safe to say that this can be about 12 percent protein. And so what I'm going to do, uh, and okay, this is the last thing that I'm talking about, and then i got to go to the bank to get this uh, form notarized, um, is that uh, uh, from what I have seen personally, you know, uh, hay, the, hay is the most cost effective when, is, when it is utilized as a, a roughage material. This is just from what I have seen. Chances are. Uh, you know, un well, unless you have someone locally that is just producing a massive amount of hay and they just want to sell it at a very cheap price, chances are you are going to uh, be more cost effective if you if you mix your feeds from from uh, from uh, feed that you purchase from your broker. I can almost you know I can almost guarantee you to you know like this hay. I'm going to mix it with the distiller grains. I'm going to go to my broker and I'm going to pick up some distiller grains. And I'm going to mix it with that distiller grains. And to put things into perspective, that distiller grains that I buy, this hay, I, buy, I paid a, I paid a, I paid two and a quarter a ton. I paid 225 a ton. So I paid $4,500 for a 36 bales. 
And you all already know that, uh, you know, I'm not good at math. And so you can tell that I'm not making the numbers up. And then I have to pay for uh, trucking as well. So that's the, those were the numbers. I paid two and a quarter a ton. I paid for, uh, I bought 36 bales. They were 1,100 pounds a piece. And I paid for trucking as well. And, uh, you know, and to put and when I take a look at this, hay, when I take a look at this, hay, I would say it's about, uh, you know, about a uh, 60, 62 percent energy, 60 to 62 percent energy uh, and uh, and about 12 percent protein. That's what I see when I see this. hay. and, uh, you know, I pay two and a quarter a ton for it. And uh, when I go to the broker right now and I purchase a, a tonnage of dry distiller grains, I can purchase a tonnage of dry distiller grains for three and a quarter. And that uh, that tonnage of dry distiller grains is going to be a 28 percent protein and it's going to be uh, over 90 percent. It's going to be close to 90 percent energy. So for the uh, for the distiller grains, when I buy the distiller grains, it's going to be uh, more than two times as much protein. And it's going to be about 50 percent more energy and it's only going to cost me 50 percent more. But I'm but you can't just feed your animal dry distiller grains. If you feed your animals just dry distiller grains, they're going to have a lot of health problems, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of sulfur in it. You know, you want to put them on a calcium supplement and you also want to give them roughage material, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can't just feed your animals dry distiller grains. You can't just feed your animals corn. And so usually what I look for when I see a hay is I, is I look for a hay that is a, a roughage material. You know, it could be corn stalks. It could be, it could be, a, it could be a, you know, hay like this. It could be a soybean bales are real good. You know, a cattle uh, digest soybeans very well. If you put them on soybean bales, they'll, uh, you know, they, they, they won't hardly ever have any issues on it. You can just, you can just put them on soybeans and they'll, they'll just, uh, and I put, I give them a little bit of corn when I feed them soybeans. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, it gives them that little bit of extra phosphorus and a little bit extra energy. And so I put them on, uh, you know, but corn and, uh, corn and soybeans is a real good diet for cattle. Uh, like right now I got them on peanuts, hay and corn, and that's a real good diet for these animals. And this hay right here. For this hay right here, I'm gonna mix it with corn and, and distiller grains. And so, uh, yep. Uh, and, I, and I ran the numbers on my feed, and I'm gonna be paying about 250 a ton when it's all said and done. About 250 a ton for my feed, maybe a little bit less. And then, uh, you know, I need. I, I ran the numbers, and it's like I need to feed uh, on the average between 200 and 600 pounds. I'll need to feed my animal about 15 to 20 pounds a day, and I pay about 12 to 14 cents uh, per pound of feed. And if I put them on that diet, they should put on about two and a half to three pounds a day. And the feeder cattle market right now sitting at about 250, 260. And so, uh, yeah, but I got the hay in and I got to go over to the bank and get this form notarized and sent back over to my agent. And then the uh, the lawyers, uh, every, you know, the lawyer form, I got to get that all done. And so uh, I'm going to call it a day on this one today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.